Here's Taylor Johnson back for the Eagles. Reister looking inside for Snow. Here's Jockstimer driving all the way, lays it up, and in. Good drive that time by John Jockstimer. The sophomore really took it to the rack. And he's got his first two points of the night. 31-22, Mary Washington on top. Here's Mora. Up to Holly. Jockstimer. Taylor Johnson, long one-hander on the way. Got it for three. That's Taylor Johnson's third three-pointer of the first half. He's got nine in the ballgame. And the Eagles increase their lead to 34-22. Yeah, he's got one. He's got ten points in the ballgame. 35-26. This to give the Eagles the ten-point lead with 1.22 to go in the half. In and out. Gaither Mason with the offensive rebound. Puts it up no good. Mason again hustling to grab the rebound. Here's Taylor Johnson. Got it! And you can credit Gaither Mason for that three-pointer. Did a great work on the boards. Did the Stafford County resident. And hands it off to Fairnet. Shot clock down to seven. Fairnet long one-hander. No. Jacksheimer slaps at it. Johnson comes up with the loose rebound and scores. Taylor Johnson now with 18 points in the ball game to lead the way for the Eagles. 53-42. Yachtsheimer give him credit for keeping that ball alive. He just took a swipe at it. And the loose ball trickled right to Taylor Johnson, and he had a wide open lane to the basket. And Richmond with a throw in. There's an opportunity for Vercoloni. Nice pass to Callahan. Who oh, and his shot just skimmed over the crossbar somebody to come through and head home. Here's Callahan, who I think played a very good first half as well, Ryan. Here's uh, Nguyenia. Now they roll it over to Gorez. Beautiful one touch to Robinson. Robinson with a cross into the middle. Shot, and a goal! Mike Callahan banging it home after the cross from Robinson. And you've been talking about Nate Robinson's crosses. That was a beautiful example. Oh, excellent. And you see exactly what it is. Rochester standing inside the box, picking up every player. It's somebody who's coming in on the late Late run, Mike Callahan there coming from deep. Not picked up, running through the box and just side foots it right into the corner. Great goal. And if you can't see, Lee Callishaw is ecstatic. Yes. He was doing air punches down there. He is ecstatic. And again, the veteran Sasha Gorez, Ryan, with that just that little subtle left-footed touch that let Robinson get to that ball and make the beautiful cross. One of those plays that goes unnoticed, but you as a former player, you know how important that is to see the veteran do that. Oh, absolutely. The Rhinos now have given up 10 goals in their uh, early season here, really struggling defensively. Yeah. Although, in fairness to each one of those, uh, you really couldn't, uh, I don't think he saw the one no, screen I think shot. No, he was totally screened on that. And they really weren't bad goals. I mean, there's some really nice shots from the uh, kickers, the Callahan laser that found the back of the net in the first half. Nia Zamba a moment ago, nice job of lifting it into the upper corner. And as we mentioned for Rochester, a tough start. What I think I believe so I said five straight road games to start the 2013 campaign. That's re that's a really really tough. And you know when they go into Harrisburg, another long storied franchise with with USL Pro, that's it doesn't get any easier. Right. But I'll tell you, it's a team that, as you mentioned, Mark desperately needs a win. They probably will bounce back. They'll be in the mix, we think. But boy, a rough start here. And there's an opportunity. Nice run here, and the ball into the oh. Nice came up with a big save there off the deflection, and then he smothers that drive. Hey, you, David, we've talked many times about the coaching in the Commonwealth District. The two guys we got on the sidelines oh. tonight, Massaponics is Eric Ludden and North Stafford's Joe Mangano, have done a great job with their respective programs. I'm telling you, the whole everybody in the Commonwealth, yep. with the exception of Brook Point and Stafford, are veteran coaches yep. that uh, have been around a long time and probably Hall of Fame coaches. Third and eight. And, of course, uh, the guy. Uh, Here's Watkins in motion. High snap. Ayala's got it. He wants to throw, and he does. And it's caught a, by Surratt. What a throw, Mike. I'll tell you what. The coverage was right there. What a throw by Ayala. Sobzak getting some uh, attention. And You'd the clock. have to get the rescue squad to get him. Clock's again. running. Under a minute to go. Ball resting at the 21-yard line. First down for the Panthers. 
trailing at 17-9. Here's Trice pitching to Forbes. Forbes off the left side, cuts it inside, spins away from a tackle. Nice spin. Gets inside the 15 as he spun away from Joey they, Sly. They got to call timeout now, Mike. You know, we talk about your offense a lot of times, and I've talked to you before. Your defense did a heck of a job. There was a couple of times North Stafford had some short fields to work with, but you guys stepped up. You held them to the long field goal from Joey Sly in the first half, but your defense played an outstanding football game all night long. Yeah, not to mention, I mean, that kid was kicking 55 yarders in pre, uh, pregame, right. and, uh, and our kids blocked that kick. Yeah. That was huge. Yep. And, uh, yeah, the defense played outstanding. Anytime you can uh, hold down a, uh, a quality running back like like their uh, number eight, um, that's, that's a feather in your cap for sure. A lot of emotion uh, from your ball players. I mean, a great heart, great resilience. But is it, does the emotion from the fact that you beat such a quality program in North Stafford, just a, just a, lot, a very outpouring of emotion tonight? Can, I think it's that. I think, obviously, overtime. Anytime you win an overtime, right. it's dramatic. But also, the last two years, I think they've gotten us. And uh, last year, we had a, a miscue on the kicking game that cost us the game, and we felt like we kind of gave it away. So right. I, I felt like our kids were ready, not ready, but emotionally right. up on Monday. And uh, I, I was almost worried they were getting up too soon. Right. But right, exactly. Uh, far. And joining us now here in the booth is Ronnie Pascal, uh, recognized tonight after a wonderful career with the Richmond Kickers, 13 seasons. That was a long time, wasn't it? <laughs> How did you survive 13 seasons, my man? You know what? I'm still asking myself the same question. It was a, uh, it was, it was a long time, but I wouldn't trade any of it for, for anything. What's been the key as far as when you joined the Kickers, and this, this organization has been around now, as Mark and I were talking during halftime, 21, 22 years. What was the, what's the key to this organization being so successful in your opinion? Um, you know, honestly, I think the, the biggest thing is stability, um, and they try to keep the stability everywhere. You have someone like Lee, who's, who's kind of the director of soccer, who's been here the whole time the Kickers have been. Um, they really take a grassroots approach to things, so they get out in the community, they, they get in with the youth clubs, um, and they try to bring a foundation of players back every year.